Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hi guys, this is a video for the Locker Gnome channel on Ubuntu 9.10 desktop. This version has been released recently, so I'll be showing you the various ways to install and use Ubuntu. We'll take a look at the installation itself, have a look around the OS, also show you some recommended programs, tips and tricks, customization, and I may even throw a little bit of Compass Fusion in there as well. So I am a Windows Power user. If you're hardcore with Ubuntu, please use the comments section of this video, or if you're able to, please make a video response with any tips and tricks or advice you have to the standard standard Ubuntu user. So let's get started. You may want to check the release notes of the 9.10 version of Ubuntu. Currently the system requirements stand at 256 megabytes of RAM or memory. I assume this will work on much older systems than any version of Windows would run on. So go ahead and check the release notes in relation to your computer. There are currently two ways to get Ubuntu. The first is by going to the download page and getting the ISO or CD image. You can then mount or burn this on your system. The second way is to go to the request an Ubuntu CD page where you can give them your address and they'll send you a copy absolutely free. Now this does take up to 10 weeks to do it. So if you really want to try it right now, I recommend you head to the download page. So once you have burned, mounted or received the CD through the post, uh, you'll find that there are many options to use or install Ubuntu. The first way is through the live CD. All you have to do is put the CD in, boot, and then choose the try Ubuntu without making any changes or something like that. And it will use a live environment to show you what Ubuntu is like. It's very useful for demoing. And if you like it, you can go ahead and click the install icon on the desktop and it will go ahead and install it on your system. If you have a USB drive, you can actually copy the contents of the live CD onto the USB drive. Very useful for those of you who may have broken or done CD drives. Now if you have Windows, it may be useful to use the Wubi installation method. It simply opens as an application inside Windows. You choose all your things that you want, all the settings, how much you want to give uh, Ubuntu. It will then use a sort of an area on your disk, but not a partition. It's more like a file on your disk where it will install Ubuntu to it. It will then add an option to your boot menu. So it's not really um, that much worry about destroying anything as it's doing it all inside Windows. And if you want to remove it, it's very simple. You go to the remove programs and you'll find Ubuntu there and you can take it off your system. Very, very good stuff. Now, the last way to do it is the most common method is the Windows dual boot method or a dual boot method with another operating system. And it simply involves shrinking the partition on your drive. Um, this is just a, like where Windows is stored or something like that. Just shrink it down and then use the free space to install Ubuntu. I will be doing uh, installing Ubuntu in just a few seconds on an empty drive and I'll be doing this through the power of virtual machines. Now this is another way to do it. I'm using Sun VirtualBox for this. This is absolutely free to download. I'll try and provide the link in the description for you guys if you want to download it. It's available for Mac, Windows and Linux and I'm simply going to install Ubuntu here. I'll be able to show you everything and you'll see exactly what I see on my screen. Okay, so I've downloaded the Ubuntu ISO image. I'm now going to create a new virtual machine. You can follow this if you wish. Simply click New. Go to Next. It's asking for the name. I'm going to type Ubuntu. I'm going to choose the operating system as Linux and the version as Ubuntu. This will put a nice pretty icon for Ubuntu next to your virtual machine. Click Next. It's asking how much RAM would I like. I'm going to give it 512, mainly because I have the memory. Uh, notice I said earlier in my video it was 256, so make sure that is the minimum you can give it. Now, the next thing it wants is the hard disk. Do I want to create one? Yes, I do. And I want it to be 8 gigs. That's fine. So I'm going to go Next, Next. It's going to be dynamically expanding. That's fine. 8 gigs. I'm going to call it Ubuntu. That's fine. Next. Finish. Finish. So it's almost set up. The next thing I need to do is look at the display. I'm going to click that. And it's going to bring up the options for that. I'm going to enable 3D acceleration. This is mainly for Compiz, if it does work. And I'm going to up the memory all the way up to 128 megabytes, as that's all that's available. I'm also going to go to the CD slash DVD ROM, because we want to mount this ISO image. So I'm going to go to Mount CD DVD Drive, ISO Image. It's already there, because I've already put it in. But if you want to put it in again, simply click this icon next to it, click Add, and then go ahead and click it, and it'll be in there. So that's all ready. It's all set up. So I'm now going to start it. This is the first time I've used VirtualBox on this machine, so it's going to tell me that it's going to capture my keyboard. That's fine. Don't show it again. If I want to release it, I can press right control. I'm going to do that again. Capture. Oops. I'm going to take all these messages off. That's fine. So, English. Notice I said try Ubuntu without any change to your computer earlier. This is the way to do the live CD method. But I'm actually going to go ahead and straight install Ubuntu. Now I should have had this pan straight onto this box, however once it's finished I will make sure it's going back into HD, so this may be quite a bit zoomed in. 
I'm not worried about the colour quality at the moment, so that's fine. So this is the install of Ubuntu. Notice that it looks a little bit different than the previous version. I think it was 9.04, the previous version. I may have to stop or pause it at some stages, as this will take quite a long time to install, so I'll stop it right now. OK, so it's now finished everything it needs to, and we can now see all the options for the OS. So I'm going to go for English. It's setting up the clock, that's fine. So it's telling me I'm from the United States, which is wrong, I'm from the UK, and that's fine there. Forward. It's saying this is your keyboard layout, that's fine, United Kingdom. It's now setting up the partitioner. Now this is the thing that's going to resize the drive. Now we're just going to use the whole drive, that's all I need to do, but you may find yourself having like different colours here and it may tell you that it wants to do something that's suggested or you can go ahead and do this yourself. That's purely up to you if you need some help with that. Ubuntu do have a forum that might be able to help you in doing this. But this is going to go ahead and install it all inside this 8 gigabyte partition. As you can see this is the one I set up when I first made the machine. So what is my name? Well what is my name? Duncan. What name do you want to log in? I'm going to say mobile phone 2003. Password is blah 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 blah. And the name of this desktop, I usually call it Osiris, don't ask me why. I'm going to say virtual. And I'm just going to get it to log in automatically for the purpose of this video. I shall be removing this afterwards, that's fine. So I'm going to go forwards. And it's ready to install. That was as easy as that. If you want to go advanced, you can, but that's all I need to do. I'm going to click install. And it's setting it up. So this may take a while, depending on what you're doing. It may need to resize your Windows partitions, it may need to do some other stuff. But you can see you get a nice little slideshow that you can watch while you're doing it, or you can go and make a cup of tea, or coffee, or whatever you drink. So I'm going to pause this, and as soon as this box is finished, where it gets to 100%, I'll resume the screencast. OK, we're at 100%, and we've almost finished. It's just running a few things. There we go. Installation is now complete. You now need to restart the computer. That's fine. Let's restart. I'm going to unmount my CD, or get ready to do it, I think it may give me a message to do it. There we go, please remove the disk and close the tray if any and then press enter. So I'm going to unmount the CD, and it's going to say fail to eject. That's fine, I'm just going to reboot it, and I'm going to unmount the CD now. There we go. So, grub loading, and it should start to boot Ubuntu may take a while, as is its first boot. There we go. Here we go, it's now loading up. and it's played a very loud introduction sound into my ears <laughs> but here we go so you can see it looks quite nice got a nice little orange interface I will be changing this though so what I now need to do is install the VirtualBox tool so I'm going to go to um, devices yep devices and then install guest additions now this allows me to change things like the graphics and also to allow me to move the mouse in and out without having to press right control so I'm going to say okay that's fine so here we go now I need to run the terminal I'm going to go to accessories and then I'm going to go to terminal and I need to install this so I need to cd dot dot cd dot dot then I'm going to do an ls which is the same as a directory command inside Windows and it's going to tell me that I need to go to cd-rom cd cd-rom I'm going to do a dir very similar to uh, the DOS version inside Windows and it's telling me that it is the vbox linux editions dash x86 dot run so what I need to do is type sudo oops, sh vbox now this is case sensitive so make sure you get onto this make sure it's right Positions x86 dot run. If you need any help with this, I'll provide the command in the description. I'm sure some guys will help you out. It's now asking me for my password, which I used when I first created this. I press enter, and there we go. It's now installing the VirtualBox 3.0.10 guest editions. 
minutes this should set up all the graphics for me and then when I reboot I should be able to move my mouse in and out without worrying because at the moment I don't know if you can see this on the screencast but I'm trying to hit the left hand side and I can't actually take it outside that box so this is going to take a while so I'm just going to pause the video for this as well okay just a quick note that it's now asking me to restart my guest OS so I'm just going to do that I, will, I won't make you watch that I'm simply going to go to the right hand side and go to restart and then restart so I'm going to have it restart and I'll get back to you in just a second okay so now we have the VirtualBox editions installed I must apologize because I couldn't use the desktop effects this was slowing the virtual machine down quite a lot but if you have a stronger system than me then you shouldn't have a problem so this means I can't show you Compass Fusion I'm afraid I'm very sorry about that so with this you can see I can now move my mouse in and out of the box very cool stuff that means I can highlight things in the background and also highlight things on the virtual machine before it just knock it to the side I'll have to press right control to come out of it I don't have to do that now I can also put this into something called seamless mode if you've heard of this very similar to VMware's Unity you can have the panels provided in Ubuntu at the top and the bottom of your OS's screen in the background and it will look as if it's running native on your system and anything you load up like applications will look as if it's just in a window so you don't have to run everything inside this virtual machine box so as you can see along the top we have applications places and system so a bunch of options the places is where you go for various things on your system that you need to access locations we have the little internet icon here we have sound here we have email here We've got our choice of empathy, which is the IM client and evolution mail, if you want to check those. And you've also got the time, and you've also got the option to turn off, restart, and the rest. Down the bottom, you have the recycle bin. You have a choice of virtual desktops. This is installed by default. This is something that Windows doesn't have. And on the left-hand side, you've also got show desktop. Now, the great thing about this is that you can customize this in an infinite amount of ways and I'll show you that in just a second firstly I want to get to the applications so by default with the applications you get a bunch installed by default pretty much everything you might even need to use on your system a lot of them you may have already heard of Firefox for example they've got a BitTorrent client here Evolution again we've got OpenOffice here some stuff that we've used on Windows or those of you who have used them on Windows so one thing you may not have heard of is something called Ubuntu One this allows you to sync applications or files you get two gigabytes of space on the cloud you simply put your file onto it and it will then sync it across computers very useful if you have a lot of systems running Ubuntu and you need to keep things in sync instead of having to put things on a USB drive and always having things quickly going out of date now if you want to go ahead and install your own programs usually you might have to google things if you're on Windows and all you have to do here is go to the Ubuntu Software Center <coughs> excuse me this used to be called add remove programs you can also go to the synaptic package manager by going to administration and then to synaptic package manager as you can see Ubuntu software center 2174 programs you can download here all you have to do is search so I'm going to just quickly suggest a few one is obviously VirtualBox they do have an open source edition which I really like on, on Ubuntu I recommend FileZilla for a uh, FTP client so this actually has uh, support for FTP by default inside Ubuntu, but I like FileZilla mainly for its interface. I also like uh, Advanced Window Navigator. This is a dock, so if you want to get it looking a little bit like the uh, OS X dock, then you can do that. I think another one is called Cairo Dock. Let's see if it's got that here, Cairo. There we go, Max Lowe's Cairo Dock, so you can try that if you wish. And there, there's just a bunch of things. I'll leave you to go through them. There's 2,000, and they're all split into the very different different things and they should all have uh, little descriptions against them if you really want to know what they do as you can see there's a heck of a lot of games here one of my favorites of the games is actually called open arena I think that's here somewhere oops I've scrolled a bit too far where are we we'll find it uh, there we go open arena this is a open source alternative to quake 3 arena if you played that before I love that game I've been playing that quite a lot with the folks uh, in uh, who follow me so Ubuntu software center very cool stuff now next thing to talk about is customizing and as I said with these panels, they're very customizable. How are they customizable? Right click them and go add to panel. Here you get a bunch of different things you can add to the panel. It looks very sim similar to the software installed. So if I want to have a random set of eyeballs, I can do that there. And now it's added to my panel and now whenever I move my mouse, the eyeballs will follow me. Pretty cool. You can also force quit. This may be useful for those of you who have uh, any freezes happening inside your Linux box. You simply click that and you should be able to uh, do that. So that's very cool. But what happens if we want to change the background? Very simple, like you would normally right click and it's there. Change desktop background. Now I'd just like to have a solid color. I want it to be black. 
because I like black desktops because it's easy on the eyes and I think I may need to do that again there we go black okay there we go black and as you can see I've got my visual effects turned off if you want to go for really aesthetics like the wobbly windows and things like that go ahead and go to the extras you can actually download them themes for this you need to go to gnome dash look Org. I'll pro try and provide that in the description as well but I'm just going to merely change some fonts here I'm going to change this to my favourite font which I hope we have here yep and Dotem I don't know why I just like this font I'm not a big fan of the one that's installed by default so I'm just going to change them all uh, just for demonstration purposes as well I won't be using this machine after I've done it so I'm going to go to um, Dotem here I'm going to have that in bold as it was bold oops close that out and change that as well to me it looks a little bit more professional, it's up to you what you want to do. As you can see if you want to do things like for example clear type in Windows, this is the alternative here, you can change it if you want for the best readability. And that's that. Interface, show icons and menus, editable menu shortcut keys and you can also change the toolbars. So it's pretty cool. If you want to add your own themes again, gnome-look.org, I'm sure there's loads of videos telling you how to do this, but this is just merely customising things. No, if you want to put things, for example, if I want to move the eyes up here, and I want to move it over here, it's not letting me, it's stuck. What can I do? Well, these are all actually locked to the panel, so you can right-click them, uh, no you can't, you can right-click that, and then untick, lock to panel. So I can then move, it'll move in front of that. So as you can see they're all locked so you need to make sure you do that and you can actually lock them yourselves as well. So if I just uh, lock that, it's now locked there. If you want to go on your other desktop, very simple. So that's pretty much all I need to show you. If you have any tips or tricks or anything else to do with the OS, feel free to leave a video response or even a comment. This is much as I can show you uh, without having to go onto loads of different websites and showing you many things to do with that. So I thought I'd just show you the basic install and what you can see when you get it running. Again, please, any tips, tricks or anything else, please leave a video response or a comment. I'd like to thank Chris Perillo or Locker Gnome for allowing me to make this video for you guys. If you want to find me, you'll find the user at Mobile Phone 2003. Just Google it and you'll find me. So thanks a lot for watching this video. Please subscribe to Locker Gnome and uh, that's about it really. Thanks a lot.